Welcome to Property Showcase, the podcast that brings you closer to the service providers that can inform your decisions about how you buy, manage and research top investment opportunities. Be informed and become a better investor with Property Showcase. Hey, so our first guest today is uh, Glenn Goose McGraw. Goose is the principal buyer's agent at Dashdot. Hello, Goose, and uh, welcome. Hey, Tim, how are you today? Good, mate. How are you going? Mate, I'm awesome, actually. Yeah, really fantastic week we're having. So yeah. it's going to be good to be speaking with you. Fantastic. Look, it's all it all seems to be coming up roses or certainly green shoots at the moment in the uh, in the business of property investment. You and I were chatting a little bit offline, and you were talking to me about this this drive that you have for high performance finding and finding and putting people into high performance properties. What is what does that look like? Talk me through that, Goose. Yeah, so I guess um, where that kind of comes from is is where we started out when we started our real estate journey. Like most people, we actually, you know, made a mistake, and by that I mean we bought uh, we actually bought an off the off the plan apartment, um, which is currently negative equity, is still not finished. You know, it's, it hasn't done anything that we wanted it to do, and that was our sort of first step into real estate. And that said, I was on a path to I guess trying to find a strategy which would allow us to to build a robust portfolio that could perform no matter what happened in the economy and would allow us to build a, a repeatable portfolio. So we kind of bolted together these these perfect metrics, I guess, um, around what we've defined as, as a really powerful strategy. So we're looking for high growth areas, uh, positive cash flow, and also within a, a, what I like to think of as a life jacket, having a value add strategy attached to it as well. So these are these are these so-called uh, unicorn properties, is that right? And the and and the, the and the way that we would understand them is uh, probably a better way of describing it is when you when you look to go, you look to really maximise your customers' wealth through through property. And, and and am I right in saying you're looking for sort of ten times growth? Well, this is right, and I think like unicorn unicorn is a is a very funny term which we're not actually very shy of either, because what we found by when we started putting together our, our strategy and going, okay, what would the perfect property look for look like? You know, to be under market value, it would be positive cash flow. It'd be all of these kind of things all tied in together. And I actually went out to to disprove it because I was like, well, if you if they exist, why is everyone buying them, right? So yeah. I actually went out to prove, to disprove it and to prove that you couldn't find them. And what I found that is that if you're very very rigorous in your research and very rigorous in your process, you can actually find these kinds of properties now. These, these properties that exist, they only exist in a snapshot of time, which is why they get termed unicorns, because it's almost like a mythical creature. But if you can get, if you can capture the right snapshot of time in a market, then you can find those opportunities, which, which are going to represent huge amounts of growth, under market value purchasing, and a positive cash flow, and then also still have the ability to add value later on. Now, by combining all of these elements together, what you actually find is that, is that you get a, a compounding wealth effect. So, I mean, if you think a lot of people like to go towards blue chip properties, and that's definitely a strategy, and I'm, I'm not here to, to bag that strategy out, but for a lot of people, getting blue chip properties also generally ne- means negatively geared properties, which means, you know, that generally they're going to reach a, a limit of their ability to be able to grow that, that portfolio, you know, through, through a serviceability component, which is why we've kind of focused quite heavily on positive cash flow properties. Now, once you start layering these kind of things up, obviously we're looking for good growth. So we're looking at, you know, five and a half to six and a half percent growth over the long term of any of the properties that we're choosing. But if you imagine, let's say you had a $500,000 property, which was yielding at say 6%, over 15 years, that's going to give you an accumulative cash flow on top of about $130,000. Okay. So then if you then layer that up with capital growth and then even just do one value-add strategy, such as maybe a subdivision where you make $120,000 profit, all of a sudden over, over a sort of 10 to 15-year period, you can you can 10 times your original deposit. So you can get you know a 1,021% return on your original investment. It certainly sounds like there's a, there's a lot of sort of moving parts that go to it. And I, and I really like what you were talking about earlier around the, the, that sort of mythical beast, if I can put it that way, that comes and goes so quickly. And as you were quite rightly saying, if, it, if, it, if, you know, if, it, if it's so easy to find, if it's so easy to see, then everybody would be doing it. It seems to be quite, you know, quite, well, quite well structured, quite well um, put together and also pops in and comes out quickly. So to be in the right place at the right time makes a lot of sense and that's and that's how to get into it. But then there's also the, the, the sort of the longer term play in this as well as what I'm hearing you say around, you know, making that first initial hit, but then also having a look at some other value adds that you can put and putting those all together, that's the way that you can maximize your earnings and get up to that 10 times earnings. Am I understanding it correctly? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much spot on. I mean, I think anyone who's investing in real estate needs to take a long-term view. 
we're not in it for a quick buck. I don't personally, um, I don't personally espouse to the theories of uh, flipping properties. You know, buy, buy, renovate, and flip. It. Uh, it obviously works for some people, but I like the way I like to think about it is the only reason you would ever sell a property is if it was a bad investment, right? So with, if what we can do is structure our purchasing process, and this is what we do for our clients, in a way that is going to not only benefit them long term, but also allow them to leapfrog their equity into another property and build a robust portfolio, because this is what we're about, is trying to help build portfolios rather than just buy properties. If we can do that in a way that is then going to allow, because no one put a crystal ball. So let's say you get the best best property and then in three years' time, the market starts to flatten out, government changes. You know, we've seen a lot of these kind of uh, external, uh, external environmental impacts on the market, particularly over the last 18 months. Now, you want to have the ability to be able to control your own wealth. And by that, I mean, if the market starts to flatten out and you suddenly go, look, I still need more equity, I still want to grow my portfolio, my cash flow is good or something like that, you want an ability that you can you know, pull, essentially pull a metaphorical mechanical lever and force more equity or growth into that property. So that could be through doing something like a renovation or something like a subdivision or at a granny flat or a boarding house or any number of strategies that you can do, which are going to increase not only your equity position, but also your cash flow. And so by having these kind of strategies tied in, as part of the original purchase strategy, then you're going to allow yourself that flexibility and also that safety net for the future to allow you to continue to grow you up. Lots of wisdom in there. And and and, and probably the, the, the things that I'm pulling out the most is get in early, get in well, and also just have have a good robust portfolio that can that can cha- that can adapt to the changes and that there are changes in the market and that you can really saturate the value out of as you build that portfolio and build your wealth and, and, and take a long term view on it. Absolutely. And I think the most important thing, as you just touched on there, it's, it's buying right. You know, so for example, there's a lot of uh, hotspots and everyone hears about these hotspots and they're fantastic. Now, the thing is, if you really want to give yourself, it's all about being as risk averse as possible, right? What's also at the same time maximizing your return on investment, your ROI over the long term. So to do that, you need to think about how, how can you be risk averse? Now, if you're buying in a market where there's a lot of buyer activity um, and you know, there's multiple offers going in on properties and it's super hot and, and to be honest, if it's getting talked about in all the newspapers, you're probably not going to really find these, these, these super high performance opportunities. You want to be in before that happens because that's going to give you the best opportunity to A, get the first pick of the market and also B, be able to negotiate what is ultimately an under market value. And that's still what's going to give you a, a safeguard equity position from the start so even if there is a dip in the market, you've got a bit of a cushion there. And that, that cushion is also going to then allow you to leapfrog forward in your next purchases. Thank you, Goose. Now, if anybody wants to learn more about Dashdot and anything that we've chatted about today, how do they find you? Well, look, we're pretty active on Facebook. So it's facebook.com forward slash Dashdot Buyers Agents. We've also got a website, www.dashdot.com.au. Or you can reach out by phone on 0390888037 or even by email, simply hello at dashdot.com.au. Hey, Goose, thanks very much. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show and uh, look forward to having you on again sometime in the near future. I look forward to it. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Our guest on the show today is uh, Paul Glossop, a regular guest on the show. Actually, Paul is the founder and director of Pure Property Investment. Hello, Paul. How are you? And uh, welcome. Thanks, Tim. Uh, very well, mate, and thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Now, there's a bit of a, a, a um, development on your side. You've written and published a book all about property investing. I've had a quick squiz through it earlier. A nice theme that runs through. It's all about surfing. It is, mate. It's um, probably a little bit more of a biased way to theme up a book, but uh, yeah, it's a surface guide to property investing, which is it was, it was something that was a bit of a brainchild of mine about 18 months ago where I got to the point where property was and, and is – pretty much my vocation and is my life. But surfing over the last two or three decades since I started has been a big part of what shaped my mindset and what I value and time and also other things with my life as well. So the, the thought came to me, well, they're both one and the same for me. And I thought being able to build a bit more of a, a, a brief book on all the different chapters that can relate to surfing, can relate to property investing, to relate to goal setting, to relate to how to live your best life. 
ended up being a, a year's worth of a project and um, equated to about 50,000 words and 250 pages of a book, which a publisher um, and a quick shout out to uh, to Major Street Publishing who uh, were, were, were really, really excited to actually take on the book and publish it for me. So it's been an amazing journey. It's fantastic. And it's a real achievement also to, to, to put those words down and actually get them published in a book. Not every, A lot of people have that idea, but not everybody gets it, gets it done. Yeah, <laughs> and you're exactly right. But I tell you what, there's probably no doubt at least a dozen times where I looked at it, uh, maybe a chapter or maybe three chapters or five chapters in where I thought, I can't be asked anymore. I'm done with this because <laughs> life just gets in the way. But it's kind of got to the point of like, as you know better than most, mate, training for a marathon as an example it's not something you can do in a day. Exactly right. And you know that you have to plan a long way out to get an outcome. And and for me, it was sort of saying, well, I've got this far. I can yeah, I can stop. But ultimately, it got to the point where I was saying, this is part of me. I want to really just keep pushing and share the story. So it was it was a time consuming, but it was also it also reiterated a lot of what I know. And to be able to put it into a, a book that has chapters. So now I find that every time I pick it up and I look through the chapters of trying to set the mindset, trying to learn about how to you know really do the proper groundwork and all the way going through to picking locations, investment types, renovations, house and land, commercial property, right through to things like the secrets to building long-term wealth and then all the way through to exit strategies, they built themselves as the book grew as well. And I kind of found that you kind of kept that adding layers and eventually I thought, wow, this is a really, really solid, robust story, but it's probably a little bit of a biography of me selfishly as well because I just related to how it's worked in my life rather than prescriptively or PhD, this is the way that property investment works because the truth is every property investor you ever speak to has a different story of how they got to where they did and you can't necessarily say that there is a blueprint for everyone to follow to get success. And and good days and bad and that's and that's what I like about the theme of the surfing, the analogy of the surfing. Good days and bad, sometimes the surf is big, sometimes it, there's no swell, sometimes it's all chopped up, sometimes it's really good and everybody has different styles. Everybody has a different way of, 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 of riding a wave, Massively. I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right? And, and I love it because yeah, everyone who thinks about the actual theme as well has their own you know, co- connotation. It. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love it because the way you've just said it then is it's exactly right is that the way I surf is completely different to the next person, completely different to the person who doesn't surf at all, but has a different thing that they love, whether it's a hobby, a sport, a pastime you can always relate it to what it is. And instead of being a surfer's guide to property investing, it can be a runner's guide to property investing, it can be a triathlete's guide to property investing, it can be a baker's guide to property investing. Yeah. There is always something that people can relate to and say, I can understand how I put my life or put my own my own position into this book and then I can follow the guidance as well as different chapters and try to pick what fits for me and how that's going to shape the ability for me to build my property portfolio over the years. Yeah, that's fantastic. Just a, just a quick sort of with a, uh, without giving anything away, what, yeah. if, if somebody was to read that or when people read that, what, what are they going to get out of it? What are the things they're going to learn? I think predominantly the first thing they're going to get is how to figure out what their mindset is and what kind of investor or what kind of life that person really wants to live. And that's not just for the 20-year-olds the who are just trying to figure it all out. This is all the way through to people who are just about to retire or have retired and trying to figure out what's important to me. So the first part, and we spend a lot of time on mindset, and then it goes right down into understanding all the different investment types that are available out there and what the pros, cons, and indifferences are between them and figure out how each one of those fits you as a particular investor once you figure out what your mindset is. And then lastly, I think if I was to summarize in the third set, Section is to say, well, how do you get to the nirvana, which is living your best life, using property investment as the vehicle. And that can include things like exit strategies, pay down strategies, development opportunities, how to create cash flow. So that's the part that we really focus on at the end. So you're going to get mindset, you're going to get investment types, and then you're going to get the actual exit strategies on how to create what everyone talks about, which is a passive income or a flexible life because you've got an income generating from your portfolio. It sounds it sounds really good. It sounds really um, something that everybody should be reading. If anybody wants to learn more about it and how to get their hands on it, uh, where, where do they go from here, Paul? Yeah, I'm actually allowing every Smart Property Investment show listener, uh, podcast listener, to get a free copy at the moment. So we're doing a special where if anyone jumps onto Pure Property Investment's Facebook page, they just tap the message button. If they punch in from there the words Smart Property, they'll get all of a sudden the opportunity to just literally hit a button order the book for free and we'll put a paperback copy in the post for anyone who does want to actually go and grab itself a free copy of the book so pure property investment facebook page hit message tap the word smart property fantastic paul very generous of you and uh, all the best for that thanks very much Tim. cheers the information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon before making any investment insurance tax property or financial planning decision 
you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. 